motorcycle videos always have guitar music in. You don't get any with banging techno, do you? Now what would that be like? Hmm? Hello, welcome. Hope you enjoyed last week's video with the Fender, my God. It was great to get that sorted, well, pretty much. It's uh, beginning to look a lot more like a finished bike now. But before we start this week's adventure, I thought I'd tell you about why it's going to come about. So in uh, 2009, I think it was, I went to the British Motorcycle Show and I saw a bike there, which, although I know existed, had never really caught my attention. It was just a very plain, boring motorcycle. You'll all know it. It's the Harley Davidson Sportster. This is kind of what they looked like before 2009. A perfectly acceptable motorbike shaped motorbike. Not exceptional looking, not terrible, not amazing. They just were what they were, a typical retro for the time, although for Harley Davidson it was just like standard. They were okay. They were an okay bike. But when I went to the show, they had their new model of it, which was the Harley Davidson 48. And that really turned my head because I thought it looked absolutely amazing. And I'll put up a picture now in case you've uh, never seen one. And it's, it's just a Sportster. That's all, it, that's all it is, with a few little changes. But it really transformed it. The biggest was it had a fat front tire, fork gaiters, a little tank, a little seat, all the things people usually do nowadays. But there were a few other things about it as well. But it elevated it so far from that boring sportster to what it sort of became. There were such these small modifications. You know, it was kind of the first factory, retro, bomber, customy type of bike that looked good. It wasn't just some silly chromed out artist's impression of what looked good. I mean, it, it looked really good, really good. One of those small details that it had when you got closer is that they'd made some holes in it. I think you can see where this is going now. In the chain guard, um, the exhaust guards, and a few other things, just a few little holes. It's not a military thing as such. It's more an aviation-driven quest to sort of make things lighter and more sporty. But just these, these items with a hole in, they really sort of gave it a, a cool attitude. And those bikes, I think, they became incredibly popular for Harley-Davidson. And they copied some of those elements, especially the holes not the front wheel, over to the, um, the Iron 883 model. And that was, again, that was really popular for Harley Davidson. And that looked really good as well. So you sort of had these pre-2009 sports, which very boring, vanilla bikes. And then these small, just these small modifications, flat paint, holes, different tires. And it really took them somewhere else. So I thought one day, I'm going to have a motorcycle and I'm going to make some holes in it. So here we are. Things are going to happen today, for better or worse. But that's the backstory anyway. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let's get to it. On this bike, what I'm thinking is just in this side panel to put some holes in there possibly the front as well and there's something that I want to try which I've got on eBay so let's go and have a play with that and we'll see what happens what I've got here is a special tool called a flaring punch and die which is for making Type of holes I want in sheet metal work. And what this does is there's a bolt, a 
the bolt and you drill a pilot's hole that's the right size for this bolt I've sent two bolts which is nice probably because they wear out I'm thinking and what this does is you drill a pilot I haven't tried this mind I'm just talking from what I've seen on the internet so we're going to try this first you drill a pilot's hole the size of this bolt and you pass it through the top of the die which has got this flare on it then this hardened steel punch cutter that's quite sharp and that goes through your pilot hole and then this receiver is threaded and goes on the other side and as you tighten it it punches a hole in your metalwork and then puts a flare on which not only gives you a slightly safer edge but the, the act of bending the metal should make it stronger but lighter because you've cut a bit out of it now i hope that works really well here's the offcut of the mudguard from last week actually just in case anyone's interested and for some insane reason wants to copy what i did i'll give you this measurement so this is the front edge this is where we cut the fender off and if you wanted to copy that the length around the bottom edge is pretty much 200 millimeters 20 centimeters 8 inches and the kind of curve around the top which is a bit odd because it's got a flat bit but either way the curve around the top is 27.5 centimeters or 275 millimeters, 10 and three quarter inches. Just in case you were trying to copy that. But for now, I'm going to use this as a sample to try this punch cutter. All we need to do is prep is drill a pilot hole. That looks about 12 mil to me. Twelve millimeters. Have I got a twelve mil drill? Right. Twelve millimeter pilot hole. Let's assemble this cutter. So cutting piece flare this has already got some oil on I might add some more okay, put a lubricant on this and on the die it said so there we go that in there Die in there, Let's put a bit of lip on it. And assemble it. I don't know if you can see there now. The teeth of this cutter really want to cut through there. I don't know if I'm going to need some big grips to hold the other side or whether the friction is going to do it for us okay, so obviously it's pulling on the metal resistance now as you'd expect it's 
obviously happening. I think it must be pretty much cut through by now. Really need to get that vice set up, don't I? I'm just wondering, is there a place where I should stop? Oh, it just made a little popping sound. God knows what this is doing to the paint. Right, it's almost completely closed up now. Put a bit of distortion in this, but I kind of expected. So, I don't know if you can see that. That punch die is completely closed up, and there's <coughs> there's nothing more to give. So, moment of truth for all of us. The moment of truth is I can't undo it now. So exciting. Right, put my gloves back on because it's quite sharp, I think. I haven't looked at this myself yet. Okay, well that's quite brutal. That's quite brutal. It hasn't punched that middle bit out. It nearly has, but not. Can I whittle it out? Now that paint is making it look a bit worse than it is, I think. Yeah, so the paint looks rough. But the curve that it's put in it is quite nice and linear. So there's the flare on the inside. Let's get my file, Let's see if we can knock some of that paint off. That's kind of the effect it's giving. So, whether to do it or not. I think I'd like to get it out and have a look. And we can decide whether we're gonna proceed with that or not. Okay, let's take this out. This is with the mud guard out again. possible set of holes we could put in it. So there. see it. So three holes. One, 
two, three. Obviously that metal curves away. So we can't come up too far. Five millimeters affected diameter. See, I've got some little cardboard discs. I just cut that about that size. Or is it too big? It would look like that. Like that, like that. And that's not the size of the hole, that's sort of the size of how much it's affecting the metal. or not and there'd be another one there'd be another one there where the hell that up there and have a think about this. Let's see how that turns out. So decision made, we're going to do it. Now, just got to decide. I'll just set the first one and the others will follow. Because this is a bit more critical because this is where everything, there's more going on. More going on. So that's pretty much where I want it, I think. Be honest. Yeah. Yes. This is this is what I want. Okay, as you can see there's a beautifully marked hole. Ready for the drilling. No turning back. Okay, let's upgrade that to 10 mil. Okay, so what we've got there is a step drill that goes up to 12 millimeters. Let's give that a try. It's 
So if my calculations are correct, I mean, when I say calculations, I mean guesses. Okay, right, let's do the thing where we do the thing. Washer, die. Cutting tool. Give that a bit of spray of oil. Sip of coffee. Oh, I love it when it's just too late to do anything about it. Now, will my pipe grips hold that? Because it's quite big. It's quite big. Kind of. Again, I wish I had my vice here. Right, let's do it. Oh, we're cutting, cutting. Oh, we're going to be so much trouble if this goes wrong. There's the first pop. first tooth cutting through. That felt like the second one. <laughs> okay, that doesn't want to go anymore. Is our cutting tool. Once again, it's left a little hanging edge. Okay, I'm going to be a bit more careful how I rip this one off. It is loose, so I'm just going to waggle it off. Probably make good with the file. Like that. Look how much weight we're saving. It's got to be 10 mile an hour there. Now, that probably looks awful on camera because what that paint has done. But it actually feels it's very, it's very smooth.
see this will be nicely sanded and uh, finished and before it's painted. a little bit defile there where that hasn't cut off cleanly. little tap because I can see that All right, let's have a look on the bike there we go I think it's worked out it definitely couldn't have gone any bigger when it's got the other two in which we'll do right now it's too late to stop now. We'll get those other two in. This is going to be good. I can feel it. Just have to believe. So I'm just going to use my scribe tool again to sort of set the height of this hole. You might remember the scribe tool from such episodes as a seat hacking disaster. distance along a straight line. I'm just trying to guess the center of that hole, which I should have measured earlier, shouldn't I?
I'm going to go there. And the next one. I'll go there. measurement while we're here. Right, 60 mil. Remember that. Do the thing. Just a random, random thought. I'm thinking about putting a washer under there just to push that cutting head out a bit further. So what I've done, I've put a washer down in there just to push this cutting head forward a bit. Let's see if I can get a better cut the first time. So that'll either work or fail terribly. Actually, it might make it much worse, I'm just thinking. No, I think it's going to be better. Definitely cutting anyway. Okay. There she is, bottomed out.
So what have we got this time? Ah, well, that was definitely a better cut. Look at that. And it's cleanly removed that piece of metal now. There you go. There's another 10 mile an hour saved. Should make up for the lumpy tires. Yeah, that is a better cut on every level, but mostly on the cutting level, obviously. Still a little ear there. But that was a better cut. We'll check that out on the bike. Oh yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. That was that kind of skeleton look I was looking for. I don't know how hard it is to see on camera, but this is a, this is a nice curve. It looks all rough because I mean, the paint is all mangled and, and the file has left scratches, but, but this is a nice curve on all these holes. And when I've sands all this and painted it this will that will i hope look really nice but that's just the kind of skeletal <laughs> thing i was looking for so one more in there and that'll be good and i think i'm going to want to get onto painting this as soon as possible because it's just going to be depressing leaving it all like that now what was that number 60 wasn't it 60 millimeters so that was 60 millimeters from the edge to the next center Put my pencil board in there. i don't know if these pencils rotted during lockdown or oh. they're very soft but then that's perhaps just how they work One cheap, they're about three quid, I think. Right, so um, 60 millimeter. Obviously, I don't want that to conflict with our mounting hole, so if it does, we'll be changing that. So you can't really see it anyway. And there's our center finder. So you'd already set it with the scribe block. I don't think that's strong enough to go through there. Oh, yes, it is. Special cardboard. That's all right, because that's the edge of the deformation and that's not near there. And these curves, allegedly, I haven't tried it, but YouTube tells me that that metal being curved makes this stronger. Because so obviously it, the bent wall resists bending. It certainly it doesn't want to flex. We have to believe. We have to believe it's going to be good. I won't mind admitting, my feet are getting slightly cold. This drill's a bit bent enough.
have got better drills, it's just that it's somewhere else. Last one on this side. Actually, that oil might be my why my pencil went stuck. If you pardon the expression. for that pop. Oh, there's one. We got the hanger again, but not very much. Bit of filing. There is some slight tearing to the edge of that hole, but not so much that I'm. Can't work around it anyway. Here we go. Yes, I think I'm happy. I think I'm happy. I know I say that every time but I think I am happy with this. Okay. Cool, that's pretty much what I imagined. Just adds that extra bit of detail. It's hard to imagine now without this not painted and the rings are all different finishes. And it kind of looks like it's been attacked with an axe, which is not the look we're going for. Well, it's look handmade, not homemade. And that's quite cool, because it's got kind of that hidden hole. Down in there, you get that nice layered effect. That you can see down past the shock into those holes.
What do you think? I like it. I know I always say that, but I like it. There's our three holes. Just got to do the same on the other side. But I'm hoping that will be, as always when you do something, it's always a quicker the next time. Now if we can get this sharp. I can set the height because we've already got the scribe block set. I need a clamp. Right. So scribe block set. And there's our center line. Now how far back? I mean I should have taken detailed measurements, but you know. When I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll. It doesn't really matter that much whether they line up or not because you're never going to see both sides at the same time. Unless you've got a really wide head. If we do that. Eyeball it. That's close enough. You can worry too much about measurements. I suppose that's what that submarine guy said. So um, shouldn't take it too much for granted. Okay, hole. Oops. What's going on? That, that, that. See, we're going to get complacent now. Always got to be careful. I'll do it standing up like this. See if that's any better. Let's get another clamp.
can see it puts quite a bit of a pull on the metal before it pops through. There's been nothing left of this poor mudguard, is there? <laughs> we have this little bit of metal. Again, it's just not pulling off in that position. It's a good job we don't have to do too many of these holes. again perhaps next time once it's popped we'll take it out turn it 90 degrees and then do it again to make sure it cuts all the way around assuming we haven't made a disaster no that's a lot better isn't it well stuck in there now. Great, you solve one problem and you're just marching straight on into another one. Magical measurement was 60 millimeters, wasn't it? From the inside.
my batch is getting a bit flat. Not surprised. I'm not going to put that washer in this time because we're going to try the other plan. So when this cutter pops, we will loosen it, turn it 90 degrees, and then do it again to make sure it's fully cut. So I don't want a disaster now. Not long now. Not long now to say, terrify myself. Let's go back to the original way. That didn't pop, but I'm going to take it out because it must have cut through already. Right, so it's cut top and bottom. So let's turn the blade 90 degrees. Like that. No, don't turn. Stay like that. Oh, it's oh, it's turned. Oh, that's why. Didn't turn, it cut off. Right, let's finish it up. It's always when you come to the end of the job, you finally master how to do it. Which it's not the ideal time. Join the collection. Nice. <laughs> it's funny, that's the first. And even though it's such a relatively simple tool. It gets better and better. It's always worth persevering. We got I didn't forgot to file that one, look. But let's do the last one. The last one. <gasps> Imagine. Right. 
60 millimeters. I need a spare drill. This is my drill I use for work. I don't know why I didn't just get it out two hours ago. But, uh, here we are. <sighs> so Cut into spray with oil, stick it in the hole. Well, I can safely say today you have shared my complete experience with one of these tools so if you ever have to use one you can take all my learning and do it properly and throw it out the window One cut. That's the metal cut. And this is the flare reaction that bends it. On the other side. like our story of life, look, it's our first attempt. It gets better and better, and better and better. And the last one that I'll possibly ever do in my life is perfect. That's just the way it goes, isn't it? If only we were that good when we started. But don't worry, because when I've sanded it all, it will all be, because it's obviously 
going to be painted. Once I've sanded it all, it'll all look good like that. So now let's have a look on the bike. I haven't put the sleeves in because uh, this is fine for our purpose. Let's just rub those white lines up. <laughs> hey, look at that. I like how you can see the tire right through the little windows. I mean, it is obviously patently ridiculous putting holes in something that is literally designed to keep water in. But, you know, if we had sense, we'd just drive a car, so never mind. That's nice. It's like, you, I like this multi layered that it's stuff, but you got. You can see through and there's a little hole. I'm a bit exhausted, that took ages. That was quite an involving day. In case you're worried, I can't think of anything anywhere else to put big holes like this. So I think that's the last of that, but I'm thinking of the front now, because I've got that little one. Can we do anything with the front? Let's have a look around this side anyway. Let's have a stand back. Holy moly. Look how much weight we saved. Whoa. Alternatively, I could just eat less pasties. But no, cutting things off is much better. And I can keep going to the pasty shop. That was a lot of work to remove those little bits of metal. But I'm glad it's done. This is our version one front mud guard. I don't, don't want to do anything ridiculous, but if I could put just a few feature holes in it, just to kind of echo the theme from the back, that'd be good. So the other small die I've got makes holes that big. So if I could just put a chain of holes, perhaps just along this edge, if it works out, then that's what I'd like to look at. So let's get this off and see if we can ruin it. Back to the workbench then. These white lines I've put on are roughly where the, the stays go. So I'm gonna try and avoid those positions if I can. This is the punch die. It's not, no, it's not a punch. It's just the forming die. You have to drill the hole. It doesn't, this one doesn't push any metal out. Now it's not as big as that. The hole, the final effective flared hole is about as big as the head of this uh, cat bolt. And there's pretty much a perfect, so this is flat and then it raises off quite quickly. So if I can get this hole to be in there. First one there, last one there. And what kind of spacing? Um, not too close together. I don't look like it's been shot with a machine gun. I don't it like that. Yeah, something like that. What's that, about 50 mil? Fifty-five mil. So let's just see how that steps off. Fifty-five 
Obviously the chances of this working out are almost nothing, so I shouldn't have done it like this. Fifty-five puts me about there. So I'd like to go further. Let's say sixty mil. I mean, I could have done all sorts of maths to work this out, but sometimes it's good just to mess around. So you can see the cumulative effect of going 60 mil instead of 55. It sort of rapidly starts to expand on that last one. That'll put the last one. The ones that are 60 are just above the line. So it's that one, two, three, four, six holes. So that'll kind of look like that, that. It's not too many. Six holes. Let's just see what 50 mil would end up like. So those are the ones that are going up from the line. We have a definite wood for the trees moment in a minute, and that we don't know what on earth is going on. So really 50 mil spacing, the start and end is exactly the same as 60 mil, but I'm guessing one more hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. The washers are just sort of denoting holes, they're not any magic sort of device. Seven holes. One, two, three, so sixty mil, fifty mil. Decisions, decisions. I could have 60 one side and 50 the other, so I could be happy most days. Could go around the front as well. Mm -hmm. 50. I don't know, the 50 just looks a bit too much. I think I'm going to go with 60 mil. As he says, as he keeps playing with it. I'm not sure if this is helping or not.
I'm gonna go with 60. Right, so uh, load of pilot holes. Nice sharp drill. Load of holes, here we go. Said sixty, didn't we? Yes. Must remember to stop at 10 millimeters this time. Not go to 12 and ruin it. There we go. <coughs> I think 60 mil was a good choice. Bad. Let's see if we can clean that white pencil off. Yeah, that's handy. Remember them? That was a weird couple of years, wasn't it? Ooh, all the holes. Now, this should be substantially easier than the last one. Um, bolt, die, the oil. 
watch this all go wrong at the last second now. I need a spanner. Let's use the bodging spanner for now. How about I put this on the right way? flare thinking now I could even put that in my drill couldn't I? Let's get the right size spanner. Fourteen mil, yay. I'm rushing because I'm getting complacent again and it's nearly tea time. What do you think of that? That was just what I was imagining. Let's have an Imagineer on the bike. So, normal. Full of holes. What do you think? This one will be much easier to repaint, obviously. Holes at the back. Holes at the front. Any other holes? I think that will do for now. Although I have got of ideas. I'm not going to mess with the side panels at the moment because I want to get it on the road. But if any come up on eBay, I might get a pair of side panels to um, have a good mess with. Right, let's do the other side.
Not bad. Let's have a look. There it is. What do you think? It's turned out exactly as I wanted. That's gone really well. Much better when it's painted, obviously. Check out those bullet holes. I mean, lightning holes. Just a bit of extra zombiness. And there's the back. It took a lot longer than I thought, but um, new things always do, I guess. So is that, was this Saturday's workshop day? Phew, tea time. I'd like to do some in the side panel, but not at the moment. We can leave that for the main paint job, probably in the winter time. But we may be doing something here next time. We've also got handlebars. some real lighting ideas so we'll look at real lighting and number plate next time maybe the handlebars yeah that is a good plan for when I see you next time hello well, there we go that was today's workshop day I hope you enjoyed that I'm a little scared, but also pleased with how the holes have turned out. They're going to be a lot better once it's painted. Thanks very much for joining me again. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to follow, because uh, I hope it's going to get better. And um, have a great week. I'll see you again next week. Hello, welcome. Doesn't sound very welcoming, does it?